Good morning. I am Uncle Jimmy in Knoxville, Tennessee at the College Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you let us make it through another week safely. Thank you for that you let us be here to worship you this morning. And I ask that you will let me say something that will help us along the way and to see you someday in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Yes, I'm Uncle Jimmy. You can look at, I got a haircut. I clean up well, don't I? I clean up well, I'm still Uncle Jimmy. Okay, just a second. I want you to pay very close attention. It has been my practice in life to always try to learn something every day, try to glean something that will help me in life and to see God. I'm looking for something every day. When I go to places, I'm looking for something that I haven't done. I don't know everything I can learn from other people. I'm a brick mason, brick artist, but there's somebody that have done something that I have done, and I'm looking to see what it is. So, let's Rolling. Several years ago, in the Himalaya Mountains, get real cold. It was a hunter lived on top of the mountain. His son, his wife, and Bruno. Bruno was a big brown dog with brown smock spots they call it a Saint Bernard well I will always go with the kind of dog he was just as long as he a dog I've had several dogs all I know they was just dog and had a name and I enjoyed them and they performed the little boy got sick one day but what they the practice was when they live on the mountains and they would try to get all the things that they would need throughout the winter so they wouldn't have to come down the snowy mountain during the winter months, the hard months. So that's what they did. But up there, the little boy got sick. And the hunter, let's call him hunter, had to come down and get some medicine because his wife had to stay with the boy. The boy wasn't able to go, but they was trying to try the home remedies. And I have had a lot of home remedies myself. What is a home remedy? It's the thing that your parents prepare at home, the medicine to try to get you well. Okay, when I was small, it was possible to live 14 or 15 years and never see a doctor because of the home remedies. They had something for this. They had something for the earache. And they had this and that. Somehow or another, they worked. But it got to be a time when no home remedies didn't work. So the, the, uh, the hunter had to leave the mountain. They go down and get some medicine. The doctor was at the foot of the mountain. Okay. He and Bruno going down the mountain. They did well. See, when you're going down, you don't spend much energy going down here with a bicycle, with a car, when you walk, whatever it is, going downhill, it doesn't matter. All you got to do is stand up and put your legs in front of you. And that will keep you up. And you don't have to spend much energy. Well, they got started down the mountain and did very, very well. Got down and talked to the doctor and told the doctor what he had, what, you know, gave him what the boy was doing, what he thought he had. And they prepared him some medicine to go back. Well, the Hunt and Bruno, they rested while they got the medicine, 
then they had to go out and hit the elements. In other words, they had to go out and hit the snow to go up that big mountain. They got out, started to go and see, sometimes the snow is, you got to do this to get in there because the snow come up to here, to here, to here. And I don't know how far, but they had to use more energy coming back up the mount. And they got tired quicker. They didn't get tired going down. The dog was jumping up and, you know, licking his tongue out, blowing, happy. But they went a piece and the hunter, he was going and he Lay down, said, let me rest, Bruno. And Bruno wouldn't let him rest. He kept barking, kept barking. And then he'd catch him and pull on him. And then he, all right, Bruno, well, I'm going. He'd go back up the mountain for a little piece further. I don't know, maybe a half a block or so, I don't know. But anyway. He stopped again. Bruno let him rest a little while. Then he catch him, or which is ever wore by his clothes, <gasps> and, and wiggling his tail and barking and pulling on him. He wouldn't let him stay there too long. He did that one time, two times, three times and several more time. And finally, they reached the top of the mountain. But he never would let him stay too long. Remember that. That was the reason. Well, when he got to his yard and he laid down to stretch out a little bit, you know, try to make himself comfortable, and Bruno would get him again. Whatever he could pull, he just pull on and bark and bark and bark and bark and bark. And I guess it was about a half a block from home. That's where he had reached this time. But the hunter's wife came out, said, that's Bruno. They must be back. She went out. Had her clothes on and everything, you know, prepared for the weather. She went out and helped Bruno to get her husband to bring him back in the house with the medicine. He got in the house and tried to warm him up. You know, they had it warm inside. They warmed the hunter up. Now, one thing about it, when you get cold, you can't put too much heat on an aching person. When I was a little boy, I went fishing. Just off of the story for a minute. I went fishing. And I caught a fish about that long. And I brought the fish back to the house, and the fish froze in my hand. But I was crying, snotty nose. I went in the house, and my aunt knew what was happening. Jim, why did you throw that fish away? Your hands are cold, boy. And she had to take her hands, was warm, and put them around my hand. And she would put them in cold water. Because if you put them to the fire, they're going to ache more. You're going to ache more. But see, my aunt knew all of that. And so back to Bruno. They got him in there, and they start working on him. Probably put some cold water on him and <laughs> slap him and all of that to keep him, you know, to revive him. Now, you remember I said that Bruno wouldn't let him stay long? That was the reason. The reason is, if you are cold, cold in cold weather, you lay down and go to sleep, you'll freeze to death. You won't wake up. 
So Bruno was smart. He wouldn't let the hunter go to sleep because he might not wake him up. So I would put that back in my mind to try not to get too cold and go to sleep out in cold weather because people do freeze to death. And you wonder, how did they do it? You can get sleepy, and you just sleep on and never wake up. Never wake up. So try not to be where you have to be too cold. And that's one thing, like I said, put it in your memory bank and have it in your remembrance. Now, as we go through life, there's a lot of things, a lot of position in life that you don't want to put yourself in. And if you don't put yourself in those positions, you will never have to get out. Let me give you something a little closer. My mother used to tell me, said, son, don't pick up a bad habit and you'll never have to stop. Don't start bad things and you'll never have to stop because a lot of times bad habits is hard to break. And let me give you something about life. I've laid many bricks in my life. I get a little sloppy sometimes. But if I know that somebody is around me trying to learn, I try to fix it so they don't learn no Bad habits. Bad habits is bad, period. Now I'm going to say it again. The reason I'm saying it again, I want you to remember. If you don't stop, you will never have to stop. Don't stop. And try to stay out of the position where you might get caught at something, then you will never have to worry about getting out of it. Try to stay away from trouble. Watch your company. I was just telling my wife this morning about a young person I know. I said, when we came up, we, had, we couldn't just play with anybody. My grandmama had a keen eye. I don't want to catch you playing with the little boys no more because they're going to get in trouble. And when the police come, you be standing around looking with your hand behind your back. They gonna take you to jail too. Now I could be caught if I wanted to. My mama, my grandma, my grandmama, and all of them, when they told you something, you can drive a stick in the ground. They gonna hold up their part of it. So, uh, We'll let that go for now and try to think about something I said that you can use in life. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful again that you let us come this morning and tell a story and let it be recorded and let it go to other places. Hopefully that somebody can glean something that will help them in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.